You're listening to the RSL Random Fan Podcast, the podcast for Real Salt Lake fans of every age and level of soccer knowledge and experience, even for those who have never played the game. Your hosts are lead instigator and Real Salt Lake fan from the beginning, Brant Goble, Major League Soccer OG and national team lover, Tyler Thomas, and the kid who keeps them all in line and the only one with any fashion sense whatsoever, Brennan Goble. On the podcast, they share their random thoughts after every Real Salt Lake match, win or lose. Besides team and game commentary, they work to bring you the highest quality Real Salt Lake and soccer community content. Content that includes interviews with Real Salt Lake insiders, current and former players, and random fans just like you. They also talk soccer from around the world, from the U.S. men's national team to little clubs like Manchester United, Arsenal, and my personal favorite, Tottenham, and the behemoth that is Crawley Town FC. Enjoy this episode of the RSL Random Fan Podcast. All right. Starting with energy. And sarcasm. Yeah. Cut, cut. So, take two. <laughs> We're starting with energy. We've got two games to get through. It's another episode of the RSL Random Fan Podcast. Brennan. And Tyler. Brant. Yeah, Brant. We'll beat, you that Brant. Brant. <laughs> beat you to the intros. Yep. So anyway, we got two games to talk about. We had the the really exciting season MLS opening. season opener. Boom. They could not uh they spent so much time on all of the pregame stuff talking about how important it is that uh, Real Salt Lake become the team of Major League Soccer. The right. team of the decade. They couldn't stop talking about it. They spent so much Salt Lake talk. Hours and hours and hours previewing Real Salt Lake <laughs> against. Um, nope. No. No, is that not no, how it went? No, it was not really at all. No. Mostly. The messy train. The messy train, yep. All about Miami. Are you getting tired of it? Well, and then Will Smith showed up so that people would buy more of his song. Welcome to Miami. Nobody's bought that song in years. Well, he was trying to bring it back all by himself. <laughs> Way he, to go, Will. He did a great, great job. Thanks for showing up. So do we want to go over the lineup? Because we talked about Do Miami. we host? You tell us, host. I am going to read the lineup, and you can do what you want. Perfect. So yeah. the first game, first game of the season, McMath in goal. And then we end the back line of Anelli, Glad, Vera, and Brody. And then in the midfield, Ojeda and Palacio, kind of a 4-2-3-1. Midfield above those guys, Luna, Ruiz, and Gomez. And then up top, Chicho Arango. Captain Chicho. Captain. Yeah, they made that decision. He's now the team captain, which is anybody surprised? Or were you expecting maybe Clad or I mean, that would have been cool, but I think Chicho's a good choice too. I liked it on the bench for that game. You had Beavers, Holt made an appearance, Silva, Oviedo, Chang, Hidalgo, Julio. And Kaliskan, um, a kid from nowhere. Out of nowhere. <laughs> from not the Portland Timbers. Yeah, he got drafted last year and didn't make it with the Timbers, but he's made it with us, at least made an impression, made it to the starting lineup. And then we also had the kid, Fidel Barajas, on the bench. Fidel. So just real quick, their lineup, we don't normally do this, but it's Miami, so let's do Miami's lineup. Just the All Stars. We we're falling just, into the MLS. Just draft. just the All Stars. Yeah. Just the quality of player on the other side. So DeAndre Yedlin, former Premier League player, but whatever. Uh, Jordi Alba. <laughs> enough said. Uh, Sergio Busquets. Holy crap! Right, like Messi, Luis Suarez, like, and then you know Robert Trailer and Gomez and Gressel have all been MLS. All stars. They have Gressel now. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. man, how much money do they have? So we call that lineup stacked, we which do. is pretty cool. I mean, and then Drake Calendar, he's an up and coming ke- keeper, but you know, a uh, very good keeper. Their center backs aren't stacked, but they're solid. You know. Yeah, they're if you not got Messi in the class, middle, you don't really need to be an all star in your position. And that's the sad part is I thought we were gonna. Attack them, and Chicho was going to have the upper hand on those two, and and it didn't end up planet panning out that way. But you know, 
Yeah. I, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> I was super surprised. The first half was really flat from our sales. That fair? Very one-sided, yeah. And I thought, we've got the Raw Raw Coach of the Year. Right, we've talked the about Zen how. Master. Do they Zen not Man. know who we have? I mean, seriously. Did they? Did, we, did they not consult with us before they know. played that one? Mm-hmm. Pablo is this master motivator. Mm-hmm. Masteroni. Minestroni. Minestroni. Sorry. <laughs> Masteroni. <laughs> hey, I didn't I know just, if you were like crossing him with some. I thought I heard a pun in there, <laughs> and I went for it, and the pun wasn't existing. So. <laughs> well, I was gonna say. I'm gonna backtrack. My bad. I love it. I love it. Uh, it's Maestroni because he has the knack. Oh. <laughs> That's terrible. But I, if there was one game where you should be able to get your team fired up, it's the game where you come out as the ultimate underdog against the best player on the planet. And exactly, you, you could have made. There's no reason they they should have come out too fired up, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel like it should have been like a we got this. Let's do it. Let's just freaking show them who we are. But then we just we must have saw Messi and was just like let's just be a spectator for the first half and watch what he can do. And I get that from Pablo Ruiz. He probably grew up watching, hearing, seeing Messi. Oh, he's a Ronaldo fan. Well, he's from the southern part. He's not a Porteño. He's not from the you know oh, Buenos yeah. Aires, right? Yeah. But he probably idolized Messi to some degree. But the rest of them, what's their excuse? You know, we got some Colombians and like. <laughs> it's like I get it. There's some admiration, but I don't know. I didn't see one time where we just clocked him and said, I don't care. Get over it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, he's the greatest. I mean, you you got to be starstruck as a soccer player. Sure. Well, but you don't have to run around with a Sharpie trying to get him to sign your kit during the first half. Right. Which is kind That's of what, true. <laughs> what, well, what it felt look. like. And yeah. I think this speaks to a lot about how, you know, with the with the roster change or mainly just the coaching change. Um, and then we were expecting to see this brand new philosophy on the field and brand new way of moving the ball. And it was like not there. And it, we're yeah. Like, what? Where? Where is it? Where to go? There was there was no there was no identity at the first half. No, for sure. Yeah, and maybe maybe they were trying to sit back and play um, defensive and just kind of get through the first half and go into the. Into halftime, zero zero, but it seems like a massive opportunity miss. Not well, to... and the way we ran the press, like you know, Pablo's a big proponent of the press, but when Pablo Ruiz is running the press up top, I just don't know that that's the answer long term. I think we tried it out, and we were like, eh. what? Oh, another gr- disagreement on my side. This I, is why we I don't like sit next Pablo. to each other. This is why he's in the middle. Yeah, so <laughs> Pablo Ruiz just coming back from, you know, that meniscus um, surgery. Yeah. Um, I can't expect a guy to be in full 100%, you know, game form like he was before. I mean, that's going to take some time to build up that rhythm and get back into the way he was before. I think I think he's a perfect set for that midfield. And I think one thing we complained about mainly on this podcast last year was where's our midfield? Yeah. And now we're not having to worry about a midfield at the moment, which is pretty spectacular. Yeah, the midfield is the best part of the team, and it's only going to get better. As long as they get another guy from the championship, right? We're still kind of naive, though, and that's why I think Matt Crooks is is a great addition because he definitely didn't play that way in the second game. No, no. no. Foreshadowing there. Holy cow. But, uh, yeah, I mean... uh, I'm not going to say it was love at first sight, but... (laughs) But, too late. You're already in love with him. You didn't even even step on the field, man. Fan and your fanboy. Anyway, (laughs) uh, I think Ruiz didn't like his performance. I don't think he liked what he did. I don't think he liked the way he performed. And he was kind of angry throughout the game. He was kind of mad, you know? He wasn't, like... Doing the fist pump thing you hate where you, ah, you know, the crazy demonstrative stuff. But he was still, you could tell he wasn't. Well, I think in both games he's come off as more composed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that's nice. But at him playing that uh, 10 role, is that what they call it, where he's right below the striker in between. Uh, yeah, kind of trying to connect the mids and the offense all together. Yeah, I don't think that's where he's going to stay. So. Well, let's, let's hope he gets rid of the 10. 
I don't think that 10 is our our option at the moment. Well, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I think 25s are a new 10. <laughs> Ab. <laughs> so, first half, really not much to write home about. It seemed like it went. <laughs> well, I was, I was looking at the app, and the app goes, kickoff, yellow card. Goal. <laughs> Half <minute>. time. <laughs> I was like, wow, uh, like not a lot happened. And of course they're just putting substitutions and goals and stuff like that on there. But yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We got a yellow card in the fifteenth minute, Pablo Ruiz. And then uh Robert Trailer Tra- Taylor. Robert Trailer. Do you remember that guy? He played Tractor in the NBA. Trailer. Tractor <laughs> trailer, see you remember. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's a big kid. Uh but uh, no, this is Robert Taylor. Uh Smaller. Not a big kid. Not a big kid, no, no. But uh, he is really good in space and in one-on-one battles, and everybody's watching Messi, so he becomes a much better player. When he gets double-teamed off the ball, he's a much less good player, but Messi's on his team, so he all of a sudden his game goes up dramatically, right? Yeah, and on that play, that goal, everybody looks at the end of the play where it kind of got under McMath and I'm sure McMath is going to be seeing that one yeah for an incredibly long time because RSL deserved to go into halftime tied it felt like it it was pretty even I was not incredibly impressed with Miami all the way around in the game it is tough when you have Messi and he's just going to turn it on and be incredible whenever he decides to. Well, well Bus- especially that set piece where he pretty much without Glad being there. I Did mean, you, that would have been like absolutely top bins right. perfection. Did you like the way we defended that? <laughs> yeah, wasn't go- that nuts? A, a goalie on each post. Like, yeah, yeah wasn't that funny? Like yeah. I was like, what? I, like I can't say I I can't you know make a decision about if I like it or not until we do it, and we did it and it worked. Yeah, and that's a special case. I don't think I don't see us rolling that no, game plan out for I don't anybody think else so either. Only Messi, right? That's just yeah. The and he had it. Specialist. He had and it on a rope. That yeah, was great. Listening to the like Taylor Twelman and his partner was it Jake Piven? I think his name is. Oh yeah, that guy. <laughs> that guy. I don't know if you know this, but Jake Piven loves Lionel Messi. Really? Could you he, not tell? Could you not he, tell during the call? He introduced. The game? <laughs> Chicho Arango as Chicho Hernandez. <laughs> Are and you I was serious? Like, you dumbass! <laughs> Start going at the TV. Whoa! <laughs> I know, kids. Bleep block it. Your ears. Bleep it. Tyler lost it. No, I was pissed. I was like, really? It's like last year when somebody was calling Gomez by his other last name. I was like, really? Andres Gomez, you're calling him like whatever. I don't even know. I was not happy about it. Like, really, dude, you're calling a game. You know this guy's the best player on the other team, and you get his name wrong. Arango Hernandez. Like, it wasn't even close. I wanted to say and tweet. Or I was not just, happy about that. Uh, make so many inappropriate comments about about his, his undying love, his undying love <laughs> and for, affection for, for Messi. It was ah! it was uh, oh. embarrassing. Well, I get it. Most of the people watching are watching for Messi. I watched the L.A. game. I'm not cheering for Messi, but I'm watching him. You know what I mean? So, like, I get it. Like, that's a big draw in the league. But also, like, you know. You're a soccer fan. uh, Yeah. Like, let's see the good soccer anyway. Right? But back to the goal. Yes. They got past McMath. Ah. That's a fumble. It is a fumble. Um, It was a hard shot. He couldn't get down fast enough and just kind of squirted underneath him. But. The point I wanted to make is if you go back and watch the play, RSL pretty much gave them the goal because they were sitting back. They were trying to park the bus before halftime. <laughs> that was weird, huh? They let Miami. Did, did you see how many passes? I counted the passes. Did you? How many passes were there? How many do you think? Seven. Four. 29. What? It was a 29 pass. Sequence for real? We so, didn't touch the ball at all. No, twenty nine passes. The thirtieth one being the shot. Wow. We sat back and gave them that. They came down. The they went down on their left side, our right side. Yeah. Crossed it over to the right side. 
back up and around and back and then a couple of passes. One thing was Busquets. Yeah, and to, Brody got caught out wide and snuck back in and then Busquets to Messi who split Anelli and Ojeda. Yeah. Uh yeah. An- Anelli and Palacio, I think. Yeah, it was oh, Palacio. Yeah. Um and then uh, no, it was Ojeda and Palacio. But anyway, he split the two of them. And then the Messi finds Taylor and and it, and it wasn't it wasn't that great of a shot even, but it was just in the most awkward spot for a keeper, right? It's like, do you go with your foot and kick it out, or do you drop down quick? You just have to decide and go fast, and McMath was just a touch too slow on or that. Or you just stand there, bend and over, and grab, you. your, grab the ball with your hand, because that's how far it was away from his hand. <laughs> but yeah. he chose to do the dive thing, and it was too much too much movement for such a simple shot. And I think he just got nervous. You know, I think that was a, a miscalculation on his part. Yeah, but I counted it three or four times to make Jeez, sure I got it right. 29. 29 huh? passes. That's, that's much? Holy cow, man. What? We would have just taken your word for it. You don't have to check your work. No, it, it's interesting because I, I have been doing some research and I've, I've... Like that scarf? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like that scarf? Yeah. Looks good, man. Yeah, thanks, man. It brings, I, out, your, it went, brings out your eyebrows. Oh, thanks. Like, really. <laughs> it really <laughs> brings out the eyebrows. Huh? I didn't even know you had wow. eyebrows until... <laughs> and now here they are. <laughs> Boom. Your eyebrows Glowing of gold. <laughs> eyebrows of gold. Anyway, um, the teams ball. that typically pass more typically win more. That's like saying in tennis, if you hit the ball over the net and in more, you tend to win more. Not really, because you can pass the ball around and not do anything. You can also hit the ball over the net. And in and not do anything. Correct. But it's <laughs> way different in soccer because you can yeah. kick the ball as many times as you want mm-hmm. without kicking it well, over the net. There's got to be a stat out there somewhere the where there is more possession in one way and they lose than the other opposite, right? Yeah, like, but passing is different. So possession, sometimes that works, but sometimes it doesn't, mm-hmm. right? Especially if you're a really good countering team. But with passes... The teams that pass more are better overall. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's I was I was reading some deep data. That's fascinating. To not fascinating. not fascinating. Tell, it's stupid. Tell, it's I'm boring. actually on the edge of my seat right now. I know. Like I'm, I, I'm sorry. I just put everybody to sleep out there. Well, speaking the of podcast. speaking <laughs> of stats, I want to bring up a really stupid stat that they <laughs> brought up quite like often, especially yeah. in the St. Louis game. Was um. What was it? The most likely to win or goal? Expected per- goals. Yeah, or? expected goals and all that. Just throw that stupid stat oh, away. Percentage. Nobody gives a crap, dude. Nobody oh. gives a crap about per- like. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, we got a seventy-eight percent chance of scoring a goal. Like, win. no, yeah. they don't. That's like you put it in math terms. Like math doesn't ca- well, calculate the soccer. I, I put it down right, right there <laughs> for the game against Miami. RSL had an expected goals of one, which and Miami yeah, had one point five. Yeah. And they I, shouldn't have. Yeah. I really hate that stat so much. I think it's pretty well, it, arbitrary, or that. I mean, just kind of—it's well, kind well, of a way to describe the game and based on the yeah, chance of the, the game. Right? And when we when you watch the C, uh, St. Louis game, we score, and it like completely shifts the probability of winning. Oh, and yeah. it's like the well, no dirt. Like, what do you sure. mean? You need yeah. a pers- you need a math equation to figure out. Oh, they scored a goal. They're more likely to win. Like, <laughs> it's stupid. Well, and they it, had the on the Miami LA game. They had the percentage down at two percent by the time Messi scored. So. <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, two percent chance!" Oh, they did it! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Sorry, side note. Anyway, no, I so, think the expected goals is a little more um, insightful on how the game went and the types of chances they had. But yeah, you're right. The expected win is like really. Yeah, you think they're the gonna per- hold on? Percentage of winning. Yeah, yeah. that's funny. So what happens? What's going on after the half? So we we get to halftime, and then after halftime, RSL comes out, and it was a different game. It really was. RSL played totally different in the second. Half. What are they doing out. in the locker room that makes it so they all of a sudden turn into a soccer team that wants to fight? I, it's like, like what, is there a pre like a pre game situation that's happening that's not the same as the halftime? I don't know conversation. I don't know if, it, don't know if we change the way we press. I. I I didn't get enough out of that to figure it out, but we pressed better. We pressed because better because they yeah. gave the ball away to us so many times in the middle of the field, and we still didn't get a lot of great chances. I, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, yeah, the first, let's go capitalize on it. First five ten minutes, it was all RSL. They were all over Miami, and they were uh, crazy turnovers. And 
it was just a totally different team. I was thinking maybe we just ought to pretend. Like when you get to the game, just pretend that we've already played a half. And then yeah. before the game, <laughs> start there. Start there, and Pablo Mentally. can go in Mentally, and just yeah. say, hey, this is what we need to do in the second half. Come out. Because not being fired up to start this game, I, I still can't get over it. Well, that's a, that's a common theme. Like last year, that happened all the time where we were just so low, like dull in the first half, and then we come out fiery in the second half. I don't, I don't understand that. Like that's, it seems like a terrible tactic, as a, as a leader or coach. Yeah. Well, and then it, it, it also was kind of like, okay, do, do we not like what's going on out there? And I think Pablo lost a little bit of faith in Palacio. I th- really? I think, I think he kind of was like. I don't like what he's doing. Don't like the ground he's covering. I don't like the passes. He doesn't it doesn't feel like he's intercepting anything. You know what I mean? And he subbed him out in the 66th minute. Yeah, and uh, and put in Fidel Fidel Barajas, the kid, 17 year old kid who, by all accounts, I mean they couldn't say enough nice things about him in the St. Louis game as well. And Julio came in for Gomez, and that changed the way we were playing too because Julio was playing like right mid. Mm-hmm. Did you catch that? He was playing like the. Who is it? Who is it that plays that way? Rubio Rubin. <laughs> oh yeah, he's the Rubio Rubin the right mid forward, and then uh, that kind of dropped Ruiz back to the defensive mid, and but in the end, Julio didn't really do much either. Guy cannot dribble. The guy cannot dribble to save his life. But here's the thing that I think changed the game the most. When Gomez didn't pass to Chicho? No. When was it Gomez? I think it was Gomez, and he he crossed that ball to Chicho, and Yedlin just decked him, and nothing happened. They just he just can't. He was running back. Chicho's ahead of him. He just runs right into Chicho, knocks him over. Cross comes across. Nothing happens. No review. No nothing. And it's like, how in the world does that happen? Like I, I get that Messi is Messi. But this is DeAndre Yedlin, and mm-hmm. he can foul Chicho Arango in the box. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. I lost it. That happened twice to Chicho. Yeah. There was another time where I don't think it was Yedlin, where he was coming down the middle, right outside the box. I think it was Kuzco, whatever that guy's name is, Khrushchevsky. Khrushchevsky. Krisko. Krisko. Right outside the box, runs over Chicho, and nothing. Yeah. And a similar And the foul. ref's like, oh, just two bodies coming together. He kind of does this with his hands. I'm like. But Pablo Brain Ruiz got a yellow card for a similar foul. Right. That was even less of a foul <laughs> than the one that Chicho, which. And the second one was worse. DeAndre Yedlin was behind him trying to run to catch up. And he's faster than Chicho. Mm-hmm. I get that. But so he should be able to get around him and get in front. But Chicho was in front and he went through him. And the ref's like, no, nah, play on. Nothing. Yeah, and I don't know if you could tell this, but the ref was from Spain. He he was from Spain. He was, was the scab ref, right? Yes. In the first game. Scabby the ref. Scabby the ref. I have said I was a little upset during the game. I was a lot upset after that. Was, with the Miami game. And I didn't really want to say anything because um, we don't blame refs here. We very, very rarely blame refs. Here. However, the but, circumstances were such. And... You could argue, I've seen, I mean, the refs haven't been totally as heinous as I was hoping they would be. But at the same time, there is just something off. And there was just enough off in this game. You can't. It's like one of those things you can't put your finger on it. You can just tell that they weren't up for, they were just not up for the moment. Mm-mm. The ref. The ref. Yes. And I think they missed some calls, and I, I think Messi is going to... Um, Get the benefit every get time. Get the benefit for the most part until people get tired of the messy effect. And then it'll flip back, and maybe in the middle of the season, the dog days of summer, they aren't going to defer to him as much. It depends on where Miami's in the standings. I wasn't incredibly impressed with Miami. I wasn't either. But I, especially after that, I was, like, losing my mind. I was like, this seems so messed up, man. I think some teams that have some speed and and know what they're doing and have their system in place and figured out are going to make going to give Miami a hard time. Well, LA did last night. I mean, Sunday night, whatever game that was. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, Saturday. LA outplayed them by quite a bit, and we outplayed them in the second half for sure. And 
it was there for us. It was there multiple chances, multiple times. But you can't expect the ref to give it to you. And then I think we can talk about um, in that second half, and it's a similar story in the St. Louis game, but RSL felt like they were just this close. A goal was coming for them. Mm-hmm. And then um, I was surprised Luna. I thought Luna had a pretty good game against Miami. I agree. Um, but he ended up subbing off fairly early, too. Right? Yeah, was it the 70... 73rd minute, Kaliskan, who... And there's, there's that a, was the strangest sub I ever heard of because we we got the press invite or the press whatever email that said, oh yeah, and by the way, we grabbed we, we Calis scan. scan. He's yeah. on, he's on the like the day bus. of or something. Yeah, it's and emergency it, signing. But he was he signed with the Monarchs. He had signed with the Monarchs, so it was a call up. Mm. Technically, it wasn't a a new signing, but he had recently signed with the Monarchs. And then he was the emergency call up from the Monarchs, which is, I you know, the the rules of MLS are crazy, right? I mean that that's what we had to do to get him there. So well, that's must, what we did. Must have impressed somebody, you know, the universe and must Pablo, have, yeah, yeah, because he ended up getting into the game, getting subbed in. But um, he, I don't know, you can't put the, it's Lionel. Messi. I mean, he, the goal, he didn't show poorly, but I mean, the, the goal I kept yelling. It's like, foul him, foul him, foul him, foul him. Bring him down, bring him down. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Bring him down. Yellow card, push him over. Yep. Do something you cannot let. Uh, no. And it's Any watching the replay. Leon, if if you could do it, they would do it. But Leon Messi is really good at keeping players off him. Yeah. Right? He's Yeah, he's been doing it for years. But you have to take the foul there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to. Yep. At least make it difficult so he just can't dribble right through the midfield, and then pass it off. Because it was a beautiful goal. Yeah. And then once they got that goal, it was just like, all right, night's over. Yeah, Suarez's pass was the decisive one that made that, that made Messi's run to the middle all that more impressive. And the impressive- But Ojeda gave the ball away, which is just a fat touch. And he had two of those in the game. So, I mean, I wasn't, I don't, I usually from him, we get a lot more grit. We get a lot more ball winning, tough tackling. I didn't see it a whole lot in that game. The impressive part of that goal is Gomez is the one that stole the ball. The guy that scored the goal stole the ball yeah. and hustled all, all the way the back, way got around. to the right side, and was there for the goal. So yep. kudos to them. I thought it was a missed opportunity. I really thought RSL had a better shot of beating Miami simply because it's the underdog story and you should have your team ready fired up well it was there that, that's what i'm saying i think the coaching was there pablo put them in the right position especially in the second half to get the ball a lot and then to go forward and we couldn't do it there were three or four chances where we should have put the ball on goal gomez walked in on goal and then just missed the whole goal you know like you gotta take your chances well that, that was the game where he missed chicho right yeah he missed chicho yeah, and then he, he also okay, had a, on that one sure but but yeah. also on the one where he drove into the middle and then just kicked it six feet outside the post. Gomez. You know? Uh, frustrating. He's he he's frustrating at the moment. Yeah, because we'll get into the St. Louis game because there's a lot of Gomez in the – Yeah. <laughs> a lot of Gomez in the, in the St. Louis game. But uh, he's frustrating, and I think I decided that maybe I'm just going to focus on the positives with Gomez because it's so easy – to get focused on the negatives. Yeah. The negative is being that he doesn't know he has teammates out there. <laughs> he holds the ball too long. He and- can't finish. Wait, you were there? You were there? <laughs> I'm always here. I play center forward. <laughs> Where did you come from? When did you sub in? <laughs> when did you sub in? But his decision-making yeah. is still not there. Um, but at the same time, his talent is undeniable. So maybe focus on the positives. Talent. The talent. The talent is there. Yeah. And not just get uh, focused on the negatives, but so we ended up going down two nothing. But by all accounts, we were done. Well, I think a draw was uh, looking at the expected goals. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, uh, it, the the stat that was what told the game was seventeen shots for RSL, fifteen for Miami. Shots on target eight for Miami. 
So more than half their shots were on target. We had Dose. And one was Brian Vera. And it was from about 40 yards out or 35 <sighs> yards out. Almost caught him napping. Well, if Brian Vera leads our team in shots on goal, there might be a problem. Because mm. yeah. we did score on that header too, right? Yeah, Chicho faded off offside after that. That was tough, but I don't know. You still have hope for RSL after this game. Oh sure. sure. Yeah, it's and I don't. Early. I don't think it was near the uh, the scoring. It's it's funny. I look at Google sometimes, and they they put the 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 uh, ratings. fan ratings on there, and everyone on Miami was uh, three point six or higher. And a lot of them were fours, and everyone on RSL was two point six or lower, except Is that out of five or one. Oh, and then even McMath was three point oh, and he let that goal sneak under him. So you know what I mean, like. And they didn't differentiate Anelli from anybody else. And anyway, I thought he locked down that right side pretty good in this game. Mm-hmm. I thought he got to give huge kudos to Anelli. Yeah, he did really well on that right side, and. uh not a horrible defensive display, honestly, for what Miami can do to teams. We 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 shut down Suarez for most of the game too. I mean that he's always a threat getting behind people. Yeah, it looks like he's limping a little bit after that. LA oh, you game. think he looked like yeah. he was in pain? Yeah, I'm surprised he stayed on as long as he did, but whatever. No, not our problem. Nope. So <laughs> any any final thoughts on the the Miami game? Could have been a better fight. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a missed opportunity, I Only, think. only one off sides. Did Julio even play? <laughs> he was playing midfield, that's why, right? <laughs> anyway. So, should we go to halftime? Let's go to halftime. Halftime. Is there a button we push? That one. Bam. Bam. Shakam! <laughs> so for those of you on the video who couldn't couldn't hear that, that that was our halftime jingle medley brought to you Didn't by we? our sponsor, our almost sponsor, our and Water. our almost best friend. Oh, Ghost Pickleball. <laughs> yes, Ghost Pickle. Ghost Pickle. So any orange slices for the first game? I gotta I gotta give Anelli huge props. I think that guy coming like second year in the league. Um, being a draft pick last year, this guy is just so, so good to have on a team. I mean, he makes Jasper, last year Jasper, or, you know, the season before that, look kind of average. I think Anelli is such a great signing for us. Um, yeah. And um, kudos to Brody for kind of laughing at the whole Messi <laughs> kicking the ball over him while he's pretending to be hurt. Oh, I know. Practice cone, bro. I mean, he did get stepped on, to be fair, but it's his hand, right? Like, well, I thought he got fouled before. No, he, he got, did. He, get he fell because he got fouled. Yeah, he and got right. he fell down, and then he got stepped on. Right? Yeah, he was fouled. The guy kicked him, and, and they he, didn't call it. And then he got stepped on. Didn't call and then it. he got chipped. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't like he was faking that he came up and he had, you could see. It was kind of funny, mm. actually. Cleats on his hand. Yeah. No, but if your hands hurt, you can still run around. You still get up. He did. I know. After the play was dead. He should have just grabbed the ball when they chipped it. Right? <laughs> that would have been funny. So what about you, Tyler? Any orange slices for the first game? Um, I would love to give some, but we were so poor across the board. Everyone in attack was lackluster at best i didn't like the way palacio and ojeda teamed up i didn't like the way ojeda gave away that ball at the end you know like uh it's hard to give an orange slice but i I guess glad i think was the most consistent throughout the whole day in miami he didn't have the save yeah and he, he he was good he was really good um but yeah that ugh. Yeah, I think you guys Rough. covered it. I think Anelli and Glad might have been uh, the best part of that. I'll give everybody an orange slice for the second half. <laughs> for there coming out, okay. showing up finally in the second half and making it making it a game. But it did seem like RSL, the, 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 the field was tipping in their favor. They're going to get a goal, and then they turn around and one bonehead mistake or maybe not even a mistake – 
Miami capitalizes on their opportunity, and boom. It's 2 nothing, and It's like when you're a kid and, like, the first half you're playing uphill, you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden you change sides, and you're like, we're going downhill, guys! I can run we so fast. We got downhill this time. I'm faster. Kick it ahead, man. I'll, I'll be there. West United. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so I think that's it for Miami. I don't think we'll ever go back. No, no. Messi's there. Once, nah, Messi's, once I mean. Messi's gone, we'll be there every year. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we'll have a trip to Miami every season. Uh, j- just so you guys know, people at home listening, kids if you want, um, <laughs> we we don't play every East team every year, right? So this is the first time we've ever played Inter-Miami, and they've been in the league four years. Yep. And one of those was COVID, and, you know, they have lots of reasons why that happens, right? But in the end, you're supposed to play the East teams every other year and the West teams you play twice. So we haven't played Miami. There's probably a reason for that. And uh, I heard Colorado that. is going to Miami as well. So they're not going to any altitude at all. Mm-mm. I think it Mom was messes. David Beckham. I don't think he likes Utah. Not to put that out there, not to start a rumor, but hey, I don't he was, think. He was good to us when he showed up, right? Well, I don't think there's enough Lego here for him. Legos? Yeah, he loves Legos. Uh-huh. Yeah, he spends a, he spends a up lot of time playing Legos. Putting stuff. together Legos. Oh. Not the little ones, the big ones. Huh? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, if you have that much money, why are you playing yeah. with the little ones? Yeah, yeah that's he's a good like, point. He built his whole house out of Legos. It's amazing. Wow. It's incredible. I don't so, even know what we're talking about. Let's talk about the next game, huh? <laughs> Shall we? All right. Well, let's get to it. So after that, we But we, well, we still have energy. We're coming out with energy again. Ooh, uh, the second game. Love the sarcastic It's like halfway home. Marks. I'm going to talk about us. Yeah. No, I'm saying like we got like halfway home from Miami. St. Louis, is that about halfway? Kansas City, maybe it'd be halfway. Mm-hmm. Either way. Yeah, one either of the way. two would be halfway home, right? So yeah. starting lineup in St. Louis. Um, this was on Saturday, 6.30 p.m., Mountain Time. Any other stats we don't need to know about? So, mm-hmm. McMath in goal again. Yep. I think I was kind of surprised. I thought maybe they might throw in Beavers, but... Give him a game, maybe. Give him a game, but mm-hmm. I'm a huge McMath fan. Backline had a Hidalgo at right back, and then Glad Vera and Brody. And Nelly moved up to the midfield with Ojeda. Palacio uh, went to the bench as... Uh, Tyler was suggesting. And then midfield had Luna, Ruiz, and Gomez, and Chicho up top. It, it, I was looking on the MLS app, and they have uh, a really funky positioning. <laughs> 3 two, two, one. Yeah, uh, don't, don't worry. The other theme, team's a 3-3-2. Three, three, so, I mean, I don't know how that adds up to 11, but there we go. That's pretty funny. Uh, good job, cheap. MLS app. You guys are awesome. Anyway, um, I, I like the way we lined up here better. I like the way Hidalgo came in and played. I thought he definitely belonged in this game. And remember, for you, for you guys who don't remember at home, St. Louis is a kick them, chase them, push them around kind of team, right? If you ever played a team like that, maybe they were named the Rowdies or something similar to that. Um, the pushy, pushy punks is what another team we played was called. <laughs> Chrono. No, we we made up lots of funny names for the other teams, but um, yeah, if they, if their whole like identity is, yeah, aggressive, yeah, let's go, come on, determination, let's win this, like ah, you know, they, and they're yeah. just running as hard as they can, going like, in like, all out every tackle, like playing Bill and Ted. That is St. Louis. Big people. They were uh, they were really big, they tall guys. They are giant, and yeah. they never foul. Oh no, no. Absol- Even absolutely. when they run people over, they're like that was soft. <laughs> they come from the Peter Vermees school of, of knock them over soccer. But they are, they knock are, them sock them soccer. They are a well built team. I love so, the size. What was your guys' expectations starting of the game? I was expecting that St. Louis was going to come out and get on top of us and just go crazy because it was their home opener. And then looking at it, they also played on Tuesday. We played on Wednesday. They played on Tuesday at home. So that kind of takes the that excitement down a little bit. Mm-hmm. And they beat uh, Houston 2-1 to one in their first CONCACAF game. Yep. Um, so I was expecting, I was still expecting this to be all of the energy on their side. 
and I was expecting them to jump all over us the first 15 minutes. But it turns out RSL came out like they should have came out to play against Miami. And it was – I really enjoyed this game. I thought it was back and forth all game. Both teams were uh, pressuring at times, and it, it just went back and forth. Well, one of the things I really liked about this was the way the referee handled the game. I know. That's what I said, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I thought he handled the game well. He called fouls that were fouls when they shoved us in the back and kicked us in the heels. He called it. And I was like, nice. Way to go, ref. Way to step in there and man bun it up with the rest of them. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Um, like I said, it's, there's still just there was just something a little off. We need to get the pro refs back to P- PSR. Didn't they have pro on their things? They did because pro was locked out the uh, the union PSRA Professional Soccer Refs Association. So these were the Junior Varsity Refs Association. No, these are JVC. These they, <laughs> these refs came from uh, way down. A lot of them came from all over college refs and stuff, but they didn't do a bad job. But there was still just one of the things that you notice They didn't is organize the game very well the or players, maintain the game very, very well. I the, thought he did an okay job. I, I, I don't think there I don't was think anything he did horribly a, missed or anything, and no. he called a lot of fouls. I thought it was fine. Yeah, I don't think it was too bad. But at the same time, there was still there's still something wrong. Mm-hmm. still something yeah. off, and you can sense it. And I think if they don't get it fixed, it'll start to build up until you end up with like the calls you had in, more calls like the ones you had in L.A., yeah. Where the second yellow was. Was an air ball. The guy no totally missed it. But that's a different game. So. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I thought the, the game went back and forth. And uh, I thought the first half was really good. I thought it was interesting that we did have some chances. Gomez again. Gomez was all over the place. <sighs> Up and down the right side. He couldn't find Chicho to save his life. <laughs> No, man. He, he knows what that guy looks like, right? He would send in the crosses and they Both d- games they played were in yellow, so like we should have figured it's that like out. It's like a right? highlighter running around in there. <laughs> so um, It was pink versus yellow highlighter. Like how did we not like he, he did have the great play off. where he he carried the ball like seventy yards. Yeah. And got around the defender, I think it was Nielsen. Yeah. And oh, got one yeah. on one with the keeper and And then he passes it to the keeper. <laughs> like what kind <laughs> of finish is that? It was the, yeah, he did there was no power. Yeah. And then there was lots of times where he tried to get that cross, but it was on the ground. Couldn't beat the the first defender. Tim Parker. Chicho. Yeah. yeah. And, and Tim Parker's going to win that ball all day. And Tim Parker, he had to go out. He got injured in the, yeah, that in was, the first half. A couple of injury ball. concerns. Yeah, we right wish, off we wish him well. Vera and then Tim Parker. I mean, I guess Vera was just worried that he had hurt himself. but he, just he, got, kinda... he got clipped really good on the ankle. Yeah. If you watch the replay, Vera. Yeah. Yeah, he got cleated pretty good. So And they didn't yellow that guy that did that did they no 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 I mean well no it went because they Pompu got poo poo got uh, <laughs> that guy was <laughs> such a whiny player man <laughs> got a yell in his 24th minute but Vera was early on but RSL came out Chicho was uh, so Chicho had a, he had a shot real quick like two minutes yeah mm-hmm. um, is that the one he skied this way he, he he got both sides of the net in this game. Mm. Yeah. He got the first one, he got the the right side for the keeper and the next side in the second half. But I thought it was it was a really well played first half. Um it is interesting. They RSL kept going down the sides because that's kind of where they were forced to go down. Yeah. Maybe because St. Louis clogs the middle and they They re- they play really tight together. They do. And, you know, the, the player that really, really struggled in this game for us was Luna. He had nowhere to go. He, he, he couldn't find the ball. We couldn't find him to give him the ball. And when he had the ball, he couldn't go anywhere he with it. He couldn't go anywhere, yeah. So he, he really did struggle. And, and I think in the two games, he had probably the worst performance. And he probably would say that. Yeah, and I don't know if it, it's not necessarily that it's the – the worst performance, or it's a horrible performance. It's just not up to the standard we thought he was going to have. Ineffective. ineffective. Yeah, he yeah. just could not find the game. The game couldn't find him. Those guys are trees in there. I mean, well, and also he's gotten a lot of publicity as of last year. So now he's become more of a target for 
every team we're going to go see, they're going to you know be marking him a little bit tighter than everybody else. And I think Crooks, the addition there, might make it so they're looking at that tree trunk and going, uh, and then Luna kind of it frees him up a little more. Uh, but I Crook has some eyes, man. <laughs> He knows well. Right? He's, he's got. I mean, obviously, he's looking over everybody, but he's got such a great vision, and he's a good runner. Like that guy is quick for a guy six foot four. Like that's insane. I think he's taller. Really? He may be. I think he's taller than six four. He mm. stood up to Chicho, and Chicho was like on his collarbone. And yeah. I was like, oh, like he's gotta... when they celebrated, I was like, <laughs> whoa, was dude. Like, what? I think he's seven three. Oh my I, gosh! It's one of those things that you don't want to be too tall in soccer, right? right. Yeah, they're not going to think. <laughs> but you know, it could be one of those things like uh, Jasper Lawfelson is listed as five eleven. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that guy's five so, five eight on a good day. So yeah, it's like I, those high school kids that. <laughs> oh, I'm six two. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. You're five ten. Yeah, you can barely touch the net. Anyway. So. But First, go ahead. no, I was gonna say Yarrow came in for Tim Parker and then got two oh, shots to the head right after I, that. How did that guy <laughs> stay in the game? I don't know. He should. I thought he was gonna go out for for protocol. Caution, yeah. He got hit in the neck. Like he went up for a header, and he went to head it, but he missed it with his head, and it hit him in the neck. Yeah, that ball came off his head and dinged yeah, him good. Dinged him right in the neck, dude. And somebody was on his shoulder. I can't remember who, but glad. Yeah, glad. Yeah, you're thinking right. And then, uh, man, I just kept thinking we were going to score on a header. We had three or four opportunities mm. to get on the end of those, and there, some of them were close. And Then a few minutes uh, later, the one I thought, it's like, this guy, he's not going to leave. He's going to go out on a stretcher, out cold. Because <laughs> he leaned in, he stuck his head in trying to get the ball before Chicho, yep. and Chicho's shoulder just went right through the side of his head. And it's like, this guy is going to... I have a headache for three weeks. <laughs> because he but he's did. so excited that he got to play, oh. right? <laughs> he, did, he came did. off the bench. He did not look like he was excited to play a couple times. <laughs> not ago. after that. You're no. making me go back out there? <laughs> really? Okay. Can I have an Advil? Oh. So the first half went back and forth. I think um, McMath had some saves in the first half, didn't he? Didn't Brody yeah. have his save in the first half? Yes, that's right. His double had. save. The double Saved save by line. Brody, another player in the right place at the right time, just like Glad against Miami. And and Brody looked a little more at home, but oh, guys, like he's not a left back. I I know that he's jumping in for the team, but why why is Oviedo there if he's not going to play left back? Yeah, it's just just to be on the road trip and felt the roster because I don't I we don't heard he was in and out of the lineup and maybe recovering, but like. Brody is not the answer at left back, guys. No, Brody's not really the answer at left back or right back. But with with how stout we're becoming as a team, Brody is going to be an Achilles heel yeah, for he's, most he's of the season. He's going to be on the bench. I mean, yeah. I think I think with both Anelli and Hidalgo playing as well as they did, I think Brody's third at right back now. I don't know. I don't I there's something some, Pablo sees something in Brody and there's something that Brody's doing consecutively. I just feel that for all the positives Brody has, there's a, quite a bit of weaknesses that pe- other people can really start utilizing way too much. Yeah. And it just it makes me feel uneasy every time it goes to his side of the field. And that doesn't mean he's a bad player by no. any means. He's a player you want on your team. He is, yeah, absolutely. But when we have all these signings, it's like we should be setting a new standard instead of holding on to some of these other pieces that are... Where where would we be? Here's a question: Where would we be if we still had Aaron Herrera at right back? Oh boy, where would we That's be tough. with? Um, yeah, he didn't Brooks. have a he didn't have a good attitude though. I mean, Brooks Lennon did. He was really super competitive. Brooks Lennon, I think, but is the captain Atlanta for overpaid for him. Which now he's like, yeah, the captain or something down there. I think somebody said All-star, he's star, right? Brooks Lennon's the captain on Atlanta, and he just hit his 200th game in, milestone in MLS. So, I think both of those players are probably better than Brody, but Aaron Herrera I think was sitting on eight hundred grand a year, and there was some um, that season after um, during the season when um, Demir was injured, kind of his production kind of went down naturally because there's no one in there 
Oh, he was lobbing balls to nobody because nobody was there. <laughs> well, and they were like, there. They were there. We just couldn't see him. The balls but that's that's there. what I that's what I really <laughs> don't like about about that. Like we're <laughs> gonna get rid of a guy because the person that like connected the goal into the goal isn't there anymore. Like that guy's still doing the role he signed up for. He's still pr- producing. He's still a great defender. And we're just gonna toss him because we don't have any other pieces that can head the ball in the goal. And I think he, he struggled where is, – is he in D.C. now? Well, so he went to Montreal last year. And, and he's in D.C. And they kind of agreed to disagree. You know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah. Now but he did he's get an DC. assist in D.C. in the first game with D.C. Guess why? Because Christian Benteke plays for D.C. He's a target forward. And that's what he's good at getting the ball to, right? It yeah. makes sense. So I, I do like – I do like Andrew Brody, but I do think that if you're going to rate the positions, that yeah. right back might be the weakest spot. But could be wrong. Could be another like Gomez. Let's focus on the positives and not the negatives. Well, um, and I love Brody too, but he's not the kind of player that wins the ball. He's the kind of player that pokes the ball away. And for me, as a as as a coach and as a, 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 a you know the way I want my team to play, I want ball winners. I want guys that'll get in there and get physical and win the ball and, and then turn hold on and to that run ball. It up the field. Yeah. Like both and have, Brody have the ability and, to orchestrate afterwards. And Nelly do. I think that's a huge missing piece right? for Brody. I think Brody is yeah, he's great at his initial role. But then once the the time the thing shifts and now we have the ball and we're moving the ball up, Brody is not a good a good passer. Overall, I mean, he's good. But he's not but great. He's he yeah. doesn't have he doesn't have a through ball. I've never seen him, you know, skip a line. I've, I've, he's only what? done one section at a time. I remember one time he did. Really? In Moose against uh, the Mexican club at oh, uh, stadium last year. Remember? That's right. Straight down the middle, of Moose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and Moose once. finished it off once. It was that second goal of the goal we scored right after <laughs> each other, right? Yeah. I was like, Brody, he never plays that ball. Anyway. But yeah, but yeah, and I you think normally he doesn't play that ball. But also, if we didn't see a Nelly in a right back position, I still think we would have been like, "Oh, Brody's doing his job; he's good." But now that we've seen a Nelly produce a lot of things in the right back and also in the midfield, it's kind of like, "Why are we doing this? Why why are we having this role change so significantly?" Yeah, and Hidalgo held down the right side against St. Louis pretty well, I thought, mm-hmm. and, and he's a bigger guy too, and so. I think because of that, he's more of that, you know, get in there, get physical. And when you have guys like Joao Klaus, who's both German and Brazilian at the same time somehow. and yeah, <laughs> He's huge. He's Thorson huge. is huge. Thorson towered yeah. over um, Hidalgo. Well, and Hidalgo's the, a big kid, and that Thorson is bigger than him. And then that Edrin. The other guy. A Dinneran? Oh, no. dude. A Dinneran is such a good player. I would take him on our oh, team. Oh, yeah. They, they, they got, stole him from it's almost, Seattle. It's almost like they don't know how to play with him, though. Oh, so They he, couldn't get him the ball for the longest time, and then all of a sudden they just lob one out there, well, and Vera think, gets too close, and he shrugs him off. And oh, dude, uh, that, that dude is a, he is a mountain. He's 6'5". Going up against... And he um, gets behind defenders so quick. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he's so fast. Let's, before we anyway. get to that, um, first half, 0-0, which was probably where it Deserved. Should have been. Deserved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Both teams played well. I enjoyed watching this game. Second half comes in, Matt Crooks, Crooksy, the tree, comes in and you realize, yeah, I guess I'd call him a tree too. That dude is tall. Yeah. Yeah. And so he gets in the 63 minute, comes in for Pablo Ruiz, takes the spot that Tyler was talking about, that 10 kind of. But he ends up out on the wing a lot. What were moving your, in and out, doing a lot of work. What were your first impressions? Well, right off the bat, he gave us an opportunity. Yeah. Like he came on the field and we almost, who did he pass to? He, I can't remember. He passed to somebody and I was, was like, wow. Julio Luna. Luna. It was Julio? Julio Luna. I don't know. He was combining it, with everybody. It was already like, wow, that's a, that's a fantastic level to see right in the middle. And that's, it seems like he's going to be just a human, like a massive piece for us moving forward. That's the first thing I noticed. Number one, he's good on the ball. Number two, he, I like, I love players that, that know where to be in, Phil. The, in the field. Yeah. Where to go. You can see he's always looking to see where am I going to fill this position? Where do I need to be? Where are we? Um, that's what you like to see in 
every sport, those kinds of players, you know, a wide receiver that knows when to stop his cross across the field instead of running into a linebacker. Basketball, same thing, finding players that know where to be. He just has that, and he, he's not afraid to run. He was looking to be open and available for his teammates, and wow. If we get a few more players like that. Oh, that's a classy guy. Wow. That is going to be incredible. Well, and one of the things that I thought was great is how he combined with everybody, right? Like, Yeah. Like, right even the on bat. the goal, like, it went from Bodie to Crooks to Luna to Crooks to Rongo, right? Like, there was our six, seven passes, whatever. Well, also, his pass to Arongo oh. is, look away. is the off the outside foot. And outside of the foot. Through, I mean... Realistically, you don't see MLS players doing that style of a pass because it's so, you know, trap the ball pass, trap the ball pass. And that's what I really loved was Luna did a back hill and then Crooks didn't even touch the ball yet, looked where Arango was, side foot to him. And I'm like, that's that's what we need. That's that's what makes soccer so beautiful. And, and if then, it keeps up like that, somebody's going to be right about Team MVP. I'm just, I'm just trying somebody? To well, I know. Somebody? Oh somebody? Oh somebody? Somebody? Chill. 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 Hello? But I also, know, it's, but it's also, 30 minutes. If Chicho didn't have that delicious first touch either, oh, yeah. that that yeah. wouldn't translate into a goal. It was delicious, wasn't it? It was. It, was it honestly, tasted so sweet. And the poise he had, it like he like looked at the goalie in the eye, was just like, you're not touching this. And it wasn't even like he kicked it really powerful. It just went no, boop. It was great because you could tell he was setting up for that far post mm-hmm. shot and and chicho could tell he he wasn't set and so he's like i'm just gonna shoot it now boom yeah so good punched it past him but that's great to dwell on the negative a little bit um there are no negatives there now. there needs to be <laughs> a memo or just like a friendly reminder that when you score a goal there will be retaliation like there 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 will be a push to make it even. Oh, the other and team it, is going to step it up. And it's not like saying? it's not like they're you know downloading you know their emails on AOL.com. <laughs> there, it's it's going to happen immediately. Oh, really? And no, we they, need to prepare for that. They're not right on away. AOL. They're on America Online. America <laughs> Online. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing, but a little earlier. <laughs> Dude, like I just don't understand this. They it's, whip out their CD. Look at this. They how many pull times? Out their how many they... times last season has this happened? We score. And then we get lackadaisy and act like, oh, we're so good, we scored. Boom. A little too often. The interesting thing about we can move on because they always say, what's the the first five minutes, the next five minutes after a goal are the most important? Yeah, absolutely, and just to, to make sure it stays. Five minutes after the goal they score. But to your point, Vera, the first went one-on-one with Andrin. Adinaran. And, Adinaran. And Adrenaline. His name is Adrenaline. <laughs> He went one on one with Adinaran, and he won that battle. You. But this second one, <laughs> it was kind of like the the play against um, in Miami, classic can or whatever the name is, Callis can. You got to make the foul. You got to. He missed the ball and he missed the foul, and he just kind of. Well, out. he tried to body him like he 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 did it a couple times prior. He could do that against almost anyone. And he wanted to body him, but Adinaran actually got in front of his body, and that's what allowed him to run in front of him. And, and he went doink, fell off. And yeah, then, pushed him forward. Yeah. and he was strong enough to hold up and keep and running. You know, realistically, I don't really fault Vera for that. I think he makes a good play at you know a one-on-one situation. I do think that overall, as a defensive setup that's what failed us was what are we doing like we're doing this weird shift where one fullback's shifting up like more than halfway up the field we kind of have a three back but it kind of looked like we just had a two-man back most of the game i I thought glad should have come over sooner i thought so too and especially since we're supposed to be doing that what's it called where everybody is everybody's position Oh, total, total, total football. Total, total football. <laughs> it's like, if that's the case, you see somebody one-on-one, you're going to move your butt to help. Yeah, and he came over at a weird time, oh. and all it did was block, get, block McMath from yeah. being able to see well, it to Well, that's what I understand. He he has McMath on inside, and Glad is setting up super far inside. So like, strange. why aren't you covering far post? Do you know what I mean? Like That was like one thing. Like I was literally watching it, and I'm like, Dude, why aren't you scoot scoot over? Scoot yeah. over. And yeah. he just plants like where the goalie should be setting up to cut off the angles. And he was easily able to bend it around. I mean, that was that was super frustrating. 
But yeah. I think that's that's the kryptonite with our system at the moment. And I don't I don't I don't I don't understand the defense side of things for us at the moment. Well, I do think Vera could have taken a better angle and maybe stood it, tried to stand him up instead mm -hmm. of trying to get in there with him. Yeah. Um, because he's quick. Yeah, and kudos to him. That's such a good signing for them. Like that's that's a fantastic they got him for play. Seattle for like a hundred thousand dollars. That's it. Gam. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, they they got a that, steal. That would be amazing. Well, they did they did pick up our guy. <laughs> they got moose. <laughs> <laughs> they got moose. <laughs> their uniforms still suck. From the back, they don't look bad, but their stripes. Did they get rid of the they're Bruce nasty. Lee uniforms this year? No, they're still there. But that's oh. a third kit. Yeah. No, it's second. That's their second? Their primary is the their green. Their primary is the 1990s, the green and blue. Since we're yeah. taking a giant right turn, okay, big so. left turn on kits, I did watch a little bit of the LAFC Seattle game, and I have to say they still look, look like pajamas, but the colors are nice. They're baby blue They're shorts. Not. They're not. Oh, they have blue. baby blue no, shorts. The baby blue shorts with the green shirt. He... That's why I said from the back, it looks okay. okay. If you're watching this. when you this, come around the front, this guy, they got these pins. This pins guy loves baby blue. Okay. Like, like everything I, you've ever shown me, you're like, look how cool this is. I like pastel. It has a blue in it. Blue. Like the kit, I don't have that. On your favorite Adidas. Everything. What color are your favorite Adidas? Well, they're <laughs> <laughs> like everything yeah so if it's if it's white and baby Adidas blue superstars. yeah you you got, a, got uh, the yeah. black ones on right now the affinity for that yeah. no i think i think from the back it looks good they should have done without the stripes it would have been clean and the gray. size of the stripes i think is the yeah. issue yeah it's, it's, it, yeah mm -mm. yeah but i feel like adidas went with like a throwback of the 90s era I with guess. most of these kits yeah and i think they failed anyway back to the game so yeah, we're back. It's one one. <laughs> Durkin one, has one been now. subbed in for Lowen. It is the eighty second minute. Oh yeah, yeah. And then uh, this really um, was surprising to me. Why didn't Julio come in? Who this game was screaming for Julio earlier, wasn't it? Yeah. He uh, same. So eighty sixth minute, and to 86th be fair, sixth minute. To be fair, the subs last season were Late. they. Well, they got. They got well, away from the ladies. The, so. Same thing <laughs> and, last year, though. Yeah. Same no, no. thing last year. The first 10, 10 to 12 games, we saw 85th and above subs. But for the majority of the season, they were subbing a lot earlier. Yeah. Because so, we didn't complain about it. Yeah. Absolutely. 60th, 70th minute, we were doing something. But so. I think um, Julio coming in with Crooks in the 63rd minute, that was that might have been a better move. But, but that's, that's you know, and after the outcome. 86th minute, get Julio come in. And then Bar uh, Barajas came in for Luna, who did not look happy. He's probably frustrated that he could not find the game. Um, and then Oviedo for Hidalgo, who was cramping up in the 90th minute. Well, and, and Barajas didn't do anything in this game. He did better in the second half of the Miami game, but he couldn't find his spot here well, in St. Yeah. Louis. What are we doing to help him, though? I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, sometimes you got to go get the game. And he's a kid, so maybe he doesn't understand that all the way yet. You know what I mean? That maybe that part of your game well, develops. We had the same later. issue with Luna. Luna was doing something amazing on the U twenties, and then in our system he couldn't he couldn't work. And now I feel like Barajas is going to run into that same issue. Well, some of it is your competition, right? These are big, strong men pushing you around now, versus before it was the JV team, right? I mean, those little Argentine the guys. USL guys, right? I mean, it, it's the USL, you know. I thought you were talking about Miami. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> talking, talking about Argentines. Just those, Argentines. Those, those little Argentines that are like the best soccer players to ever live. Yeah, those yeah, guys. Those no, guys. no, I'm talking about the guys in the USL, right? Because that's don't, where they both came from. So I don't really have an issue with um, Luna. You're going to have those games, and yeah, you. There was a breakaway in the in the St. Louis game. Oh my gosh, where, dude! Arango was away, and then and he got outrun by. Ruiz. Ruiz. And Luna gave up 20 yards in. Did you yeah. see that? It's like. Well, and they caught Ruiz. Just, we didn't get a shot off, dude. That was embarrassing. And Luna, if you watched that play, he was out on the right side. After they got past him, he just kind of started coast because he, he could have got himself into the play. Yeah, that's he what you like do. Was... You run up the field so that when your guy gets shut down, he can turn and lay it off, and you're right in line to tap it in. Yeah, so I don't have a 
It's the unselfish run that I think Luna struggles with. Hmm. I don't know if I agree with that because I feel like he did a lot defensively. He came back. He especially the first half. First half, Luna was was all the way back on the um, box, and he stopped a, a very promising attack. Like three of them came together. Luna was the one who won it. And well, then let me change the way I said that. His unselfish running on offense. Maybe. Well, I think when we were, what was asked of him was he's gassed. He's not necessarily in the play. Everything else leading up to that play has been le- like nothing has come of it. Mm-hmm. So it's very hard to be like, okay, am I going to gas myself out for a, like an opportunity they don't even believe in? Or, well, you, those are the, you got to believe in it. Well, you know, Pablo needs to have a, you know, a <laughs> quarter mental talk to everybody. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not trying to bag on Luna. I, I think, you know, he just couldn't find the game because yeah. there was no room for him. And RSL, spent, they want to go down the middle more often this season from what they're saying, but they spent most of the time hitting the wings because that's what, as the commentator kept saying, the, the switch is on. And had Gomez been in the game and had been where Luna was, maybe he's there and we have a tap in. You know this was I mean? before that, though. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If Gom- Julio was there, oh, well, said maybe. Julio. Yeah. So yeah, what did I say, Gomez? Yeah, yeah. Gomez. Oh, I, I think, yeah, Julio. I, I think Julio should have come in with Crooks. That might have been yeah. a good move. He might have just squoze it by the post though too. <laughs> yeah, uh, Julio <laughs> did have an opportunity that looked really good, and then uh, as the commentators pointed out, uh, maybe that yeah, might have missed. <laughs> that wasn't even. It wasn't quite saved off the line. It was <laughs> more like saved off the six. So it was like, almost a known goal, but we ended up getting a corner, uh, and. It was an exciting game. I yeah. en- I enjoyed it. Even as we got into stoppage time, there was eight minutes of stoppage time. It went back and forth. RSL had a couple of corners, and Matt Crooks Crooksy was in there. Um, oh, I thought we were going to score. And then, then it flipped the other way. I thought, oh, no. Brahas was taking those corners, too. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that. But he yeah. was the thing was, I noticed, like, this game and the last game, our crosses were super floaty. Like, they weren't that driven really? ball that we were getting accustomed to the last, you know, Put six Oviedo games. Put Oviedo in to take those I, corners at the end, right? It was it was Drive not. Drive that ball, son. And it almost looked like on purpose we were trying to do a two-touch to goal instead of a single touch. You know, like so that ball comes in, redirect it, and then somebody else put it in. And I honestly, that's like one of the worst ways to do a set piece in my mind. And well, One of the first ones in that. Uh, stop each time I think it was they weren't even they didn't even have a guy on Matt Crooks I'm thought oh he was outside the box drop it in there drop <laughs> yeah, it in there send, you stand there, you stand there by send himself. it out there do a, like a sideways kick or something well yeah. I think it's funny because a lot of people don't know this but the, and you're kind I, of a big guy <laughs> I'm kind of a big guy <laughs> me and my brothers are pretty big <laughs> but you can't like if you go into the box like let's say we're lining up for a, you know we got a three man picket fence going here right and we're going for this corner, right? Someone comes up and fouls us, like pushes us, trips us, whatever. As long as it doesn't escalate to the point of a yellow card, it it's not a foul because the ball's not in play, hmm. right? That's why if the ball goes out of bounds, you can kind of just shove people, right? Like okay, kids, but that's like, your tip of the day <laughs> from like, Coach Tyler. If the ball, do you want to learn about the dark arts, like Professor Snape? Hit up our guy. <laughs> Tyler Thomas, he knows how to do it. Out of bounds, but hit kick somebody opponent. in the balls. The problem is that if you, if the, like, it's a really fine line to referee. Like, you know, I, I'm watching these games and these guys are killing each other. I, at some point, it's got to rise to the point of yellow card. And you just, well, he did. He did have some conversations know? with him, like, right? But that's Gladys the Chico thing. He just that. calls. He just blows his whistle. They get by him. He grabs but the them. Amount, so I think it's like the I amount do, of flack that I you would get, though. I don't love that part of the game. I don't no, love that. Because it's what's in the back of a referee's head is, if I get this even just a smidge wrong, I am going to get so much heat and so much backlash for my decision about something in the box. Like, if it is not absolutely concrete. And clear. It, and clear, it's yeah. like, there's no way. But also, one thing I forgot that happened was Homeboy, who... T- um, took the ball up the right side against Vera, and Vera didn't even really touch him, and he goes down in the box. 
and oh, yeah. it was a total flop. Like, oh, it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and he should have got a yellow. For he that. he should have. And I think marking in or whatever his name that is. needs to be. That's going to help referees. The more they do that, where they they give a, a a yellow card for dissent or whatever it's called, flop, flop, embellishment, embellishment. Yeah, I think that is going to help out in the box type of situations because that means if if it's a real foul, it's going to be a real foul, not some of this rinky dinky stuff. But I think that needs to happen like ASAP. We need to see yellows for flopping immediately. And yet, they they were refs without much experience all weekend, so it was hard to. I, I yeah, think with you, the the experience the the ref we had actually thought, we thought he did a good job. I think so too. So I think he did all right. Yeah, like I said, it could be better, and I, hopefully we get. They're going to going back to the table February twenty eighth. Sit down and hopefully get this ironed out. What are they looking for? Back to St. Louis. St. Louis comes here then? Is that what we're talking about? No, no. The PSRA and Pro are sitting down. Oh, okay. They just, they, I saw a thing. I haven't, I honestly haven't studied it out, so I have to apologize for that. But they did say their, their uh, requests as essentially amount to uh, an extra $100,000 a team. And, you know, most, the average um, amount of teams are worth value for MLS clubs is over 600 million. So they're not asking for a ton. I think uh, um, they their compensation is still at like 2019 level when they haven't been adjusted for inflation. So I don't know they're asking for And there's been a lot of inflation, let's be honest. Yeah, uh, it's come back down. But there there has been I, I think they deserve more. And I think the only way we get better refs is by treating refs better. You don't you yeah. know, you just can't buy your way into better rest, but you create you a situation. I mean, one team can, but not yeah. both teams. Well, <laughs> you want to get the best officials, and you want it to be yeah. a desirable job. So, right. But at the same time, you know, it's you know, it's in there. I was thinking like economies of scale and all of that. Yeah, stuff. yeah. economies of scale. Yeah, whatever right. that means. Just throw that out there, but. <laughs> they no uh, all the the rising tide should raise all boats. Yes, and Major League Soccer has seen a huge inflow flux of funds from Apple and, and Messi. Yeah, that one kid. Messi mania. They yeah. didn't give away T-Mobile free, you know, Apple MLS season pass, right? They didn't do that this year like they did last year. They're not giving away games if you don't have the app for free. Just got to subscribe. Yep. So or be a season ticket holder. Yes. Yep. Um, looking at the stats, so it ended up being a one-to-one draw. And by all accounts, the if you looked at the expected goals, <sighs> stupid stat. Um, it was two point something for RSL and 0.76 for St. Louis. Yeah. And I, I thought it was really fair. Uh, Maurice Adu, I think he was the guy on the call. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, he was like, he was like, his uh, partner on the call was like, this seems like a. Uh, a good outcome, a fair outcome. He's like, no, I think RSL. Yeah, and, and Mo, they, Mo's they, a good guy. I, I I like chatting with him when we saw him in the box last year. But he's he's a really good guy. But oh, the just, oh. the the stat that jumped you, out you to me, that. I dropped something. Oh yeah, you're just dropping a the name there. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you were looking at? Yeah, more reason to do. Yeah. So um, <laughs> the passing percentage. <laughs> it was, good job. Going back to my previous point. I don't know, I'm an hour ago. Uh, I was standing was, right next to you when you talked to him, so, I mean, we're pretty much buddies. Yeah, I mean, I introduced you, but whatever, I, I didn't you get know. I did Maurice to do, so. <laughs> well, maybe you should have showed up to the game. Maybe that's why. Uh, that, was actually, that was actually super funny, because I remember going, like, who's this guy? I know. Like, why is he like, important? Uh, and Brian, you're like, dude, yeah, that's, hey, that's, this, that's Maurice to do. And Maurice. then you, the other guy. Well, you who played in the World Cup, right? And then you just yeah. got him talking. and he, Yeah, yeah and he was actually cool. He was super There was another guy who did the bicycle kick. Who was that guy? The bicycle kick that was like super famous. Wait, which we, one? I think we met him. Oh, the Marcel same. Balboa. He yeah, we the, met him the same time, right? Yeah, he did the Spanish announcement. Yeah. 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 I remember just being like, "Oh, I guess I should know them somehow." Yeah. Yeah. You were I fangirling mean, pretty hard. Yeah. That was he, nice to see. I, I he was my favorite player growing up. I wanted I to have tell. hair like him. I mean, be like <laughs> him, play like him. Yeah, that's it. Uh, passing percentage. We were eighty-two percent. They were at sixty-nine percent. So. Uh, to me, that that shows a little bit of disparity. And the other stat that showed disparity was possession. We were sixty; they were forty. Five hundred and twenty-eight so, passes for us, three hundred and eighteen for them. So we were nearly two hundred more passes than them. Yeah, That's yeah, which impressive shows what this team can be. 
And that's what made me excited from that match. Not the score line, not all the goals we missed, but hey, we played our way and it worked to a large extent. We didn't win, but it, it worked besides the finishing. And yeah, that'll come. Yeah, I thought it was an improvement. Definitely improvement over the second half and the first, definitely the first half of the yeah. Miami game. But yeah. I was really, I'm really excited. I am too. I feel I feel like there's still a piece missing. There is um, an identity that we still need to find. Um, but I think we're going to find that identity this season. I think we're going to, I think we're going to be a pretty big deal coming soon. As soon as those pieces are able to connect. Yeah, you overall. think we're kind of a big deal. I I I mean, when I we you first started Kurtz doing this, too? when we first started doing this podcast, I didn't think we were that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, but now, after seeing what we've done in the you know off season and all that, <laughs> and we're kind of going viral here and there. Yeah. You're yeah. talking about Real Salt Lake, and you're talking about the podcast. Wait, which one are we talking about? I'm talking about Real Salt Lake. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I was like, we're, we are okay. not a big deal. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, our, we're just random. Our 200 listeners are really. Hey, that's just really on YouTube. Us. That's true. But you know, if you consistently listen to us over and over again, then we appreciate you'll you. You'll fall yeah. in love. Yeah, you'll fall oh, in love. Oh, that's yeah. so sweet. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think <laughs> after these two games, yeah. I think we're we're better than I was expecting to see us coming out of the gate. Um, but I do feel that Pablo Mastroni needs to grab the crap by the by the horns or whatever that saying is grab the and crap by the horns. and honestly get results i think he is the key to do that i don't think he needs to be one with the world and get his crystals all aligned i don't know if he does that but <laughs> i i realistically think i think the coaching side needs to put the foot down and get get some results well i think crystals work better when they're not in line i don't know how that works <laughs> what, it, are they energized do you have to charge them I think you do. I don't know how that works. You put them in your butt crack and then you pray. Oh, and wow. Then, and then all that energy goes to the crystal. That escalated that, really quick. Isn't that how it goes? I don't know. <laughs> I, I had a friend once, but we were, you know, we were seven years old. We didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> so it, it was impressive. I, I was in, pleased with how we played. I'm excited to see what Matt Crooks does with Luna and Chicho and Pablo and Anelli. Orange slices for the game. Anelli. I have to agree with Mo Adu on the broadcast. He was talking about Anelli and how, uh, before the goals happened, he's like, how can you make the defensive midfielder the player of the game? That's what the one announcer said. And Mo's like, because he kicked butt throughout the game, man. He he pretty much owned the midfield, and I was really impressed by that. Good job. Good job, Chukwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikwikw
LAFC. That, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't say oh boy when we play Colorado. I say oh yeah when we play Colorado. Uh, when uh, we play LAFC, I say oh boy. Yeah, LAFC who kind of took it to Seattle. They won two to one. Yeah, they was two nothing for the longest time, and then they gave up a late goal, not by Misovsky. But um, so yeah, it's, and, and the game's at noon. Noon. Yeah, noon what a weird on start. Saturday. Well, they're afraid it's going to be cold. Yeah, because oh, really? it will be at night. I'm sure. Yep. So, but any thoughts on that? I think we're yeah. Gonna... I think our last three games against LAFC have been. Um, uh, let's see, three, six, nine. I can add up real quick. Nine to zero in the last three games. So we have not have broken not. that curse. <laughs> so, I think we had the one game where Chicho scored that one cool header where his head, his hair flipped up all cool and stuff, and then we won one zero. But um, the all time series is three wins for RSL, zero draws, Ooh. and eleven wins for the LAFCers. For the Will Ferrells of the world. For so, Miss Gilmore Garcia Para or whatever. And we talked about it before. It's going to be a big test. RSL's schedule, at least on paper, to start the season is incredibly tough. Yeah. It would be great to get a three-pointer in any of these next coming games. Yeah. So, but we'll see you there at the game at noon. Yeah. Any thoughts on anything else? We could talk about the... Let's just get to Crawley, huh? Let's do it. Come on, Crawley <laughs> update. I'll come in with enthusiasm for Crawley. Because we are on a four-game undefeated oh, You're not streak. supposed to say that. You just cursed Ringing it. Ringing it. Well, well other be people five have said it. soon. Oh, other people have said it? Three games in a row. Three wins in a row and a draw. Well. I haven't given well, up a goal in three yeah. games. Corey Adai has been stellar. Fire. He has made some incredible saves. So we beat, we tied Walsall, and then we beat Forrest Green two to nothing. AFC Wimbledon one to nothing, and Accrington Stanley. We beat them both one nothing. The axes are not as good as they think they are. Sorry, the Stanleys are not as good as they think they are. Yeah, because it's just a bunch of ladies with mugs. Oh, is that what they're? Is that what they're? Look, they have the funniest <laughs> stuff over there. They have like the canaries. And, <laughs> what's Walsall? The floppy birds or something? I don't, I don't know, man. I they, don't know. I just thought of that. The uh, the flappy the, birds. Yeah. There's some blonde ladies that are like yelling at you. But I did want to bring this up. Wrexham? Yeah, oh. let's look at the league table, League yeah, 2. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Standings. Mansfield sounds in first, 63 points. What? Stockport and right. the crew Alexander have the three automatics. Wrexham in the fourth. They've fourth fallen out position. of the automatic. They're in the playoffs. But MK they, Dons. I mean, they have a game in hand, too, so they could yeah. be right up but where, there. Where's Crawley? Uh, keep going. Oh, wow. They really were, close, though. Eight. Eight. 49 place. points. We have worked our way up to eighth place. Two no points. No dropping this year. And if Wrexham had done their job and beat Gillingham, Seriously. we'd be in seventh, but Gillingham pulled off the win. Of course, they have Glenn Morris, the cat innkeeper. I did notice that. And, man, he made some staves. You want to... Some staves. Those are a lot of staves. You should see the savings. That, saves. That little the savings he made. Staves and savings. The that the little savings. gato just took them all He out. knows how to use his coupons. So, yeah, RSL. Um, not RSL, but Crawley Town. <laughs> Crawley Town. <laughs> SL. Man, Cra- you're the creator of this podcast, and you can't even get it <laughs> straight, man. But look where Knox County's falling. Oh, oh wow. Way but down to... Look, so... the. Uh, Teams from four, five, six, seven play in the playoff at the end of the season, and the winner of those four teams is the third place team that gets promoted. But dude, and look look at the, for, between eighth and sixteenth. It is crazy. Three points. Yeah, it is crazy how tight the middle of the the pack is right now. You could lose lose a game and fall from uh, eighth to eighth sixteenth. To, yeah, you could. Yeah, <laughs> it is crazy uh, tight, and it looks like. Uh, Forest Green and Sutton. Sutton United looks like they're headed Sutton's to the National League. And Forest Green is fighting there. They actually won. Um, but they're keeping Grimsby Town and Colchester. Clivesby Town? Grimsby. Grimsby. Uh-huh. Grimsby Town. So Clivesby Town. It's been very be exciting cooler. being a Crowley Town fan. Uh, actually, you know what? Bandwagon's closed. Yeah. Really? You know, if you weren't on it's a time fan to by get now, off. Um, I'll let you know when it's op- open again. Okay. But. Oh. Um, I know all the Wrexham fans are jumping off. Oh, they're jumping off the bandwagon over there? They can still get promoted. 
Yeah, they could. We'll see how it goes. I mean, there's still quite a few games left, right? I yeah. mean, who can say no to Ryan Reynolds? They they play they 46 games in League Two. Wow. 46? 46. That's so, a lot of games. games. So there's still a chance Crawley could be one or last. <laughs> <laughs> no, Probably they're not, not going to be last, and they're yeah. not going to be first because they, you know, they're – what is that? If I was doing math. Math's four, 14 hard, points off first. Yeah, there's uh, – first, second, third is probably gone. But that seventh place, sixth or seventh, they're still in play there. Mm-hmm. So exciting. Playing some exciting football. And they play beautiful football. They play team football. They possess the ball, and they're really in a good form right now. So anyway, that's my exciting news. I know you're all just waiting. To hear yeah. That. We are on Diet. the edge of our seats. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. What about you guys? Uh, so Arsenal did some good stuff. They beat Burnley 5-0 to zero on the 17th. And then they came back and lost to Porto on the road in the Champions League. One nothing, right? Yeah, in Portugal, which I get, but they they nicked a goal right at the end. So, <laughs> I mean, I mean it was a good strike. To be fair, that was a cool goal, and you'd rather go out on something like that than a mistake or a weird bounce or something, right? But uh, then they came back on the weekend and thumped Newcastle, who's up and down. They're all over the place, but. Uh, 4-0, uh, Joe Willett got one back in the 84th minute. But until then, Arsenal just dominated. Um, I think it was 18-3 to on the shots. So the Gunners are gunning for the top spot, which they're still not there, but they're close. It's Liverpool, Man City, and Arsenal. Bringing up the top of the league, 60-59-58. And your guy is on a hot seat, right? Me? Uh, no, we're sitting in fourth right now. Um, Eric Ten Hag. No, fifty nine points. Um, we still You're have an opportunity. About Man um, United. Or? Oh, sorry. Still oh, talking about my team, Wrexham. <laughs> oh. um, no, <laughs> just kidding. Um, no, so yeah, you can't really uh, love them at the moment. You can't really hate them, but you do. Um, <laughs> the only thing that we're really ever excited for is um, somebody purchasing the team. So Ineos uh, finally. Um, I'm gonna start a GoFundMe. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so you're gonna have to go fund me a little billions of dollars. Um, but Ineos just went through with uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe um, to have keys to Old Trafford, pretty much. So now they're going to be able to make decisions for the team, which oh, is really, really nice. Oh, yeah. they got the Glazers out of the decision making. No, they did not. Oh, okay. Um, however, they did purchase tw- a quarter of the team, like 25 percent, okay. and the rights to manage. Oh. So they're going to essentially nice. control Man United, but the Glazers still have a final say because they're still sole owners. Yeah, Those guys. They own the Tampa Bay Bucks. They suck. Like, I don't understand how, like, there's got to be a way where fans can, you know, s- vote them out or something. No, I hear you. I hear you. My Reading team is suffering from a Chinese owner that's disconnected and won't pay their bills. Yeah, it's he's that's why the fans. Anymore, that's right? why the fans stormed the field a couple weeks ago, right? They, yeah. He doesn't have any money, and they don't want him there. But he can't sell the team because it's not a great time, or I don't know, whatever. They need somebody to step in with big money, and yeah, I you know, Men that's United a lot of money up there at the Men United area, though. Yeah, Men United is not. Um, I don't think they're going to be doing anything in the coming years um, with the Glazers being so. So a part of the team, they've made such terrible decisions, and I think Eric Ten Hag is a okay manager. I don't think he is, you know, a Jurgen Klopp. What you thought he was going to be? Or, yeah, he he's he's not that high level. His 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 way of uh, coaching and his style isn't producing a a solid win every single game. I mean, yeah, it's kind of interesting the way they line up most of the time. You either got these four or five guys that are in their 30s, right? Casemiro and Erickson and these guys. Or you got these kids that are like Anthony. And, oh, and so no, no, no. Anthony maybe. needs to leave immediately yeah. because he's he's absolute trash. He only has a left foot. Like you make that much money, work on your right foot. <laughs> but um, but you lost Kobe. to Fulham midweek, bro. Like, oh, dude, Fulham. that game. Hmm. And to be <laughs> fair, like <sighs> Anthony Robinson was 
probably the best player on the field that day, but yeah, that I, guy's a stud, and he's American, even though he talks with a British accent and grew up in England. He's American, man. <laughs> he plays for the U.S. freaking A. Sorry. And looking at the bottom of the table, which I, there's usually that's where it's all always fun to look at that excitement. Too, right? Luton Town, I was really excited. They were on a roll, and then they've re yanked off three straight losses. <sighs> And if they're not careful, they're going to um, end up like Burnley and Sheffield, who are kind of out of touch. Those Burnley and Sheffield United, they're going down. Well, I think it's um, what's his name, Burnley, that uh, linebacker guy that owns them. What's his name? The the guy that played for the Texans with the JJ super Watt. long. Yeah, JJ Watt. Yeah, JJ Watt owns. Burnley. He's yeah. He's a. Did you the see the investor. problems he got into? Because he was like posting things about like <laughs> he was posting clips online and stuff no way and he got in all this trouble and ryan reynolds and those guys were like teasing him they're like oh you didn't know the rules how do you not know the rules man it was funny yeah so um yeah but no he he owns burnley he's part owner of burnley and and our boy austin trusty still plays for sheffield united but uh and luton actually looks like the only of those three that could maybe work their way out of there but Forest, Brentford, or Everton have to go down if that's the case, and yeah, all, it's going to be tough. I I really like Luton Town. Yeah, that's because they're just so small town. Yeah, they are. So, any other thoughts on anything? Anything? To anything at all? Soccer. I'm ex- uh, I'm excited about the home opener, March second. Yeah. I am too. Oh, yeah, I'm ready it's to gonna go. Be cool on Saturday, huh? I Hopefully need to get it. A, I need cool. to get a jersey. I think I do. Yeah. You know? Well, don't wear it in the press box. I'm not going to. You know why? That's favoritism. <laughs> <laughs> Just like every game, we favor RSL. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So we thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. We're figuring out this video thing. We might even try some editing. Who knows? What? We might dabble. We'll dabble. And uh, get a, uh, make it much more enjoyable. Maybe we can, like, you know, CGI our faces or something. Who we should wear wigs. Be? We should wear wigs that we can do be this. Wigs. Yeah. <laughs> that would be really good. Oh, I need some cool hair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah give like me that hat that has the mohawk. Is that, uh, I just find it. <laughs> like the Ford hat that you got? Yeah. yeah but that's a good one. I'll thank you for one. listening. Please follow us. Uh, subscribe. We're on YouTube or uh, follow us on Instagram. We'd love to see that grow, especially when we're going to be adding more video during the season. YouTube. YouTube. Um, X, Twitter, whatever it's called. Um, everywhere on social media. I thought it was called 10. 10. No, it's X. Oh, the it's X. Twitter. He, he X. likes X. He tried to I name. thought it was Roman numerals. So no, he, tried to, he just didn't like Twitter? Is that why, is that why he renamed it? Uh, he's, he tried to well, name something else X, but he couldn't. But he, Space he, X? Space X. His son is um, AE-12, which is the um, airplane, the, the precursor to the um, Blackbird. Well, I mean, he he spelled the S E X Y with the letters of his Teslas. I thought that was hilarious. Model S, Model E, Model X, Model Y. (laughs) Okay. What did you? I mean, three. That's it's called three, not E. Mm -hmm. That's totally (laughs) different. That's not why I did it. Okay. Thank you for listening. Um, Reach out to us on. You can reach out to us on email. Um, Yes, and then also if you play pickleball. Um, yes. Please hit up our our friend, our good long time standing friend, Brandon Steinekert. <laughs> he goes so um, far back. If you're into pickle, buy a ghost. Yeah. Yeah, please do. So thank you for listening. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of the RSL Random Fan Podcast. Join Brant, Tyler, and Brennan every week wherever you get your podcasts. Share with your soccer-loving friends, download, subscribe, rate, and follow. You can find them on Twitter at RSL Random Fan and at RSL Random Fan Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. You can also reach out via email at RSL Random Fan Podcast at Yahoo.com. Thank you for listening.